What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. During the last part, we saw a bit of Resurrection F, and now we're going to be going forward in Dragon Ball Super. How is that going to affect the story? With Goku training on Beerus' planet, and Granola and Vegeta stuck on Earth, what's going to happen next? We'll be covering all that and more in this part. For this video, let's set a like goal of 2500 likes. Once we hit that, I'll continue with another part of the series. Anyways, let's pick up from here. Following the encounter with Frieza, Vegeta decides he's going to be training more with Granola. I mean, they're probably the best people to train with each other. They're around a similar strength, and they're both trying to grow stronger and stronger without God Key. Now, it's not clear if that's going to work, but obviously it's at least worth a shot, so they're going to try and do this. Beerus shows no interest in them, but they'll make Beerus want to train them. If they get strong enough, maybe Beerus will finally notice them, recognizing their potential of letting them train on this plan. Also following Resurrection F, there's another little development, not really too important, but Tarbol joins the Galactic Patrol. He and Jocko would probably get along, they even sound kind of the same. But really, Tarbol doesn't really have anything else better to do, and maybe he would think this is a good thing. So he ends up leaving Earth, while Vegeta obviously will stay here. Vegeta and Granola aren't the only ones on Earth training though. Gohan would definitely be training with them, as well as Goten and Trunks. Goten's been kind of ignored in this scenario, but don't worry, he'll be a part of something later on. And as for Trunks, obviously he's very different here. He's older than normal, and it's not really the same Trunks, which is kind of weird for Vegeta. He can't put his finger on why it's weird, but for some reason, Trunks is strange to him. But with him training a lot with Gohan and Granola, Trunks is finally able to unlock Super Cerulean, much to Granola's surprise. Well, maybe it's not too surprising. Gohan got Super Saiyan when he was pretty young, so assuming Super Cerulean works the same, Granola thinks this is probably normal. And it's good that everyone's working on this, because soon enough, the Universe 6 tournament will be set in place. But the team is obviously going to be very different. Of course, Goku and Vegeta are still going to be there. Very different Goku and Vegeta's though. And for the next three people, it would be Granola, Gohan, and Trunks. So only two of the members of the team are the same. And obviously they're not the same as their regular counterparts, but you know what I mean. So it's essentially a whole new team. Beerus is unsure how to feel about this. Obviously Goku's going to be ahead of everyone else. And he's worried. If Goku is eliminated, well, he doesn't know how the other people will hold up against Universe 6's fighters. And his worst fears are realized as Goku fights Frost. The fight with Patamba goes the same, but once Goku faces Frost, he ends up getting poisoned. And next up, Trunks is the one to face him. But Trunks notices something strange. He doesn't blame Goku for not noticing it. And Granola kind of picked up on him as well from the stand. Frost has a needle under his arm. His sharp vision helps him pick the sack, which means Goku's going to be reinstated at the end of the tournament. But for now, Trunks decides he still wants to fight Frost, make him pay for cheating. And once he turns Super Cerulean, he actually makes pretty quick work of Frost. That makes Granola proud. His son's really taking after him. Next, Trunks is up against Megiddo. Of course, his attacks aren't going to do any damage to him. But Whis does note the weakness of the Metal Man, and I'm sure Trunks could figure out some sort of insult. is very sensitive after all, so any of the bare minimum will work. Trunks faces Kaba next, and this is actually a bit of a challenge for him. Even in Super Cerulean, somehow Kaba's still ahead. Universe 6 Saiyans are just naturally pretty strong. But by utilizing Vital Points and the other perks of Super Cerulean, Trunks is barely able to pull ahead, defeating Kappa, which obviously means Kappa's not going to get Super Saiyan either. Alright, so even though Goku got eliminated early on, Trunks is still doing a pretty good job, but next up is Hit, the strongest fighter from Universe 6. And he stands no chance against Hit. But Granola's in the ring next, and he watched Hit fight Trunks. Sure, it was a pretty short battle, and Hit definitely wasn't using his full power, but he still was able to study a bit of how Hit moves. Even if Hit is controlling time, Granola might be able to figure out a way around it. He could predict when Hit's going to do that. He can see Hit's very subtle movements when he's about to time skip. Once he's in the ring, he immediately powers up in his Super Cerulean too. He knows Hit's not playing around, so he won't either. And immediately all his senses are heightened. Even though Hit has power on his side, Granola has technique. And Hit's amazed to see how Granola's able to predict all his moves. Well, it looks like he saw through his time skip. But that doesn't change the fact that he's still time skipping. Hit is still a fraction of a second ahead of Granola. Even if Granola knows when he's using it and can partially predict some of his movements, Hit is still incredibly fast and incredibly powerful. But he also is able to strike Hit in a vital point, which Hit commends Granola for. The two of them seem pretty similar. He notices Granola continuing to use these techniques and wonders if Granola is also an assassin. Well, maybe in another life. But even though they may not be matched in power, Hit still does acknowledge the techniques from Granola. It's kind of like a battle between two assassins. Although, Granola being able to locate vital points is much more effective. Hit could try as much as he can to strike in those points, but Granola actually knows where they are. With a combination of that, and predicting all of Hit's movements, 
he's able to slowly dismantle Hit. At one point, Hit tries to attack with a time skip, and Granola sees the perfect opening for a counter. He strikes a vital point that lands the final blow. Hit is knocked unconscious, which amazes everyone. Even with less group strength, he was able to accomplish this. And Beerus is finally noticing Granola. Those movements. He talks to Whis. Is he thinking the same thing he is? And Whis obviously noticed it as well. Being able to predict attacks like that and attack so perfectly. It's definitely an interesting combo, something that they want Goku to work towards. Maybe Granola can achieve it. Maybe he can get Ultra Instinct. So, following this tournament, is gonna be up to nothing. There's no Time Traveler, and there's no fight on God Tube that would interest him. I mean, maybe there would be a fight, but if there was, it would just be Granola versus Hit. No one making a mockery at godly power. Zamasu would probably still harbor his hatred towards mortals, but there's no reason for him to act on it here. Hit's probably the only thing that would upset him, but other than that, there's not really much. So luckily, he just stays as a normal angsty Kai. And this actually leaves hope for Gowasu to turn him to a good side. Make it so Zamasu has no more of these impure thoughts. But there's still other things happening between this time. Even if there's no big battle going on, there are some pretty big developments, mainly the fact that Granola is now on Beerus' planet. He finally got Beerus' attention. And Beerus asked Granola, is there a way for him to get a godly form as well? And Granola's not sure. Although, his Super Cerulean form did function similar to Super Saiyan. He does have two versions of that, which kind of reminds him of Goku's Super Saiyan. And if that worked, maybe there's some sort of Super Cerulean god form. Obviously, he knows nothing about it, but he could theorize. And Beerus does acknowledge this point. But even if that doesn't exist, he knows that Granola can pick up on Godly Key here, and just apply it to his normal Super Cerulean and Super Cerulean 2 forms. But most importantly, he tells Granola he wants to see more of those movements he used against Hit. Well, Granola just says he's been striking vital points, but no, it's not just that. When Granola turned Super Cerulean 2, with his heightened senses and all, it was like he was able to predict all of Hit's movements, and his body moved automatically. Well, it wasn't automatic. There was thought put into it, but he sees what Beerus and Whis are trying to get at. And Goku butts in too. He's been working towards the same thing, but doesn't really know how to do so. But Granola has a step ahead. He already has the principles of it down. It's just that he's doing all this consciously instead of unconsciously. If he could apply those same habits to an unconscious movement, he could get exactly what Whis wants to train them for. As Granola starts his training on Beerus' planet, he does grow very quick, and Whis takes note. He grows just as fast as Goku. Although, he is a bit behind because Goku did have that extra year of training on here, but also in terms of martial arts, Granola does have more unique abilities, and he's growing faster in terms of technique. Not to say Goku grows slow in that sense. He grows insanely quick. Although, Goku does have a head start in terms of power, while Granola has a head start in terms of technique. Although, his Cerulean abilities naturally just help him better in that sense. Applying the power-ups of Super Cerulean 2 to these trainings. And Whis could tell. Granola could definitely get Ultra Instinct. And Granola does request something. He wants to see if Beerus can bring Vegeta to this planet. Honestly, Beerus isn't too fond of inviting so many people here, but maybe it'll work. It could help motivate Granola and Goku more, although they are already very motivated, but having an extra training partner couldn't hurt, especially if it's another Saiyan. Maybe he could have another Super Saiyan God, an extra person to push both of them further. Even if they are already motivated now, Vegeta could add to that even further. Reluctantly, Beerus does accept this, although a few months later on. Awesome. They got exactly what they wanted. Together, Granola and Vegeta were able to get Beerus' attention. And now they can start doing some more godly training. Goku's glad to have both of them here too. Especially Granola, obviously. That's his brother after all. It's nice to be training with him once again. Even though Goku's ahead, Granola promises he will catch up to Goku and go even past him. He is the older brother after all. He should be the one guiding Goku. And Goku accepts that challenge. It seems Granola's done a good job training on Earth. Even without access to Godly Key, he's grown so powerful and learned so many new techniques. And even though they didn't get to see the kids fight in the tournament, you could tell that he's been training Gohan and Goten well. And obviously Trunks has been growing too, they saw that in the tournament at least. But he wonders if the kids will keep up their training because now, the three of them are here. Obviously Vegeta didn't really have a stake in that, but Goku and Granola aren't there to motivate them. And it's not like there's a Piccolo there either because there is no Piccolo. But back on Earth, I feel like the kids would be fine. Well, I call them that, but they're not even really kids. Gohan's an adult, and if we assume that Cerulean's age like Saiyans, Trunks is definitely fully grown by now. And his fight in the Universe 6 tournament got him fired up. He wants to get stronger, just like Granola. Of course, his friendship with Gohan was still flourish, with the two being adoptive cousins and all. They see each other a lot, and even though Gohan does pursue his studies, Trunks does keep him training. He needs a good training partner after all, and Gohan's the best person to train with. And it's not like Goten's gonna be left out. He would love to train with his brother and cousin. It's kind of a snowball effect. 
Gohan would probably be the hardest to encourage, but the other two help encourage him and encourage each other. So even with their fathers gone on Beerus' planet, they're still going to keep up their training. Wondering what kind of heights they could reach. There's a friendly rivalry between all of them, especially Gohan and Trunks. And it makes the others on Earth wonder what's up with Granola and Goku as well. Krillin and Tenshinhan haven't really seen them in too long, but they know for a fact that they're way farther ahead of them by now. It's nice to see their friends and rivals flourish like that. But even though they're far away, they are going to return soon. A lot of time passes after the tournament. Of course, Zeno did get word of it and showed up, deciding he wanted to do a tournament like that for himself at some point. And now is the time. Zeno is very bored. He also could just erase the universes because he doesn't really like keeping track of them. But how about a fun challenge? He could do that tournament that he thought of before. Not to mention, it'll be a great test for the universes. So he sets the tournament of power in motion. No need for an exhibition match either because it's just one Zeno. He doesn't need to show another Zeno how it works. And obviously this news hits everybody hard. Now Universe 7 needs to gather 10 members. Who would be the team captain? On Beerus' planet they're trying to decide, but Goku and Vegeta both acknowledge that it should be Granola. His amazing strategy could really help here. And he is powerful too. Beerus doesn't even object. Alright, that settles it. Granola's the leader, and now they need to find some people. He really just wants to speed this process up. So obviously Goku, Vegeta, and Granola are on the team. And once they go to Earth to try and recruit some others, the kids are going to join too. Gohan, Trunks, and Goten all join. So that's six people so far. Tenjinan and Krillin would probably be easy to select as well. But they still need two more people. Goku and Granola think that maybe they could try and recruit Grandpa Gohan and Master Roshi. But that could be kind of a stretch. Grandpa Gohan actually declines. Same for Roshi too. They do say they'll join if needed, but suggest that they try to find alternate members first. So those two are kind of on the bench right now. All right, so what are they supposed to do for the extra two fighters? Well, Vegeta decides maybe it's a good idea to recruit Tarbo. He's someone they could trust, and even though he's not really strong, he's decently powerful. They even consider recruiting that Jaku guy, and Jaku acts like he is brave and he would like to join, but really deep down, he doesn't. Luckily for him, they don't choose him for the team, and he breathes a sigh of relief. But what are they supposed to do for that last member? Well, they still have Roshi and Gohan as options, but those two are still suggesting to find someone else, and the group tries to ponder. Who could they actually recruit? Maybe there's some other strong humans, but who knows if they'd be able to keep up with this tournament. It's too bad that they can't recruit gods like Shin and Gabito. But that gives Goku an idea. They can't recruit gods, but he knows someone similar. They're not going to like his suggestion, though. He decides they should try and recruit Deborah. Wait, Deborah, that guy that fought Boo against them and the guy that helped revive Boo? Why would they want him on the team? He's evil. Well, who knows? Goku says people could change. Deborah hasn't been up to anything, as far as they know at least. And I mean, look at Vegeta. He was slaughtering planets before and he turned good. Vegeta tells Goku to shut up. He's nothing like Tabor. And Granola says Vegeta kind of has a point. I mean, the guy's title is that he's the king of the demon realm or whatever. Granola can't exactly remember what it was, but it had demon in the name. He can't be a good guy. But who knows? And even if he's not good, so what? If he's evil, they could probably just defeat him afterwards if he causes trouble. He would be stupid not to join anyways. If they lose, well, Deborah's gonna die too. It's in his best interest to join. And slowly, they're starting to warm up to the idea of it. Of course, they don't like the idea of recruiting Deborah, but it doesn't seem like they have another choice. Unless they go with Goku's other option of reviving Frieza, maybe. Okay, Deborah is definitely the lesser of two evils. Like, literally the lesser of two evils. But that raises a few questions. For one, where is Deborah? Two, how strong is he? Will he help in the tournament? Well, they know for a fact that he was able to help against Boo. He was decently powerful after all, and he has some magical abilities which could come in handy here, especially if he's practiced them. But the most important question is, what has he been up to? Even if they do locate him and convince him to join somehow, what has Deborah been doing? Has he just been dormant this entire time? Has he been plotting something? Has he actually turned good? They have no idea, and they won't know until they actually find him. So now, the search begins. They have limited time, but the group's gonna hunt down Deborah, trying to find him and recruit him for the Tournament of Power as the final member. And this is where we'll leave off for now. So, what do you guys think about this part? What do you think is going to happen next time? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out and see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try to hit that like over from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to be notified about any future uploads on my channel, including more parts of the series or anything else like it. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.